Hey there, folks. It's TBC time. We're here at the Dark Portal on one of the 14 Horde layers, and that is not a joke. There's one Alliance layer, layer 2, so we're gonna head over there to try to get through the Dark Portal when it opens up in about an hour. Enjoy! Right, so clearly we're on the wrong layer right now. We're on one of those Horde layers that I was talking about, and uh, we've gotten an invite from one of our friends. Uh, my UI is uh, not totally fixed up at the moment, so we can't see that we're in a group, but we're just about to... There we go! We've, uh, we've layered over to Ready Layer 2 for the start of TBC. And would you look at the amount of people, and they're not even all loading in just yet. I've got a res from my guildie, so I'll accept it. A little bit of lag later, and I'm up. And now it's a whole lot of waiting. This was the scene outside the Dark Portal on the launch day of TBC Classic, at least on the Alliance layer on Herod, less than an hour before it opened. Excitement is in the air, and I have to say, I'm excited too. I'm actually quite new to TBC. I've, I've played through all the quests back in Wrath of the Lich King, and I've poked around on private servers a little, but my memory of it is practically non-existent. For all intents and purposes, this is entirely new to me. So I'll be headed into this a total newbie, and learning things myself. Eventually, it seems the Dark Portal has finally opened up. I've moved closer to the portal, and there are lots of people here too, they just haven't loaded in from that angle up on the hill. Uh, people have reported that the Dark Portal is open, and we did see there are, there are people in Hellfire, but it's going to be a whole lot of running into the portal for a good 15 minutes. I even disconnected in the middle of this, and uh, this is all it was for a good 15 minutes, because uh, the servers were so overloaded, Especially my lair, because all the Alliance on Herod were on this one lair, which couldn't really be helped because it's uh, it's 3070 for Alliance versus Horde. It's kind of nasty. We gotta stick together, but finally, finally we get that TBC loading screen with the, the Blood Elf in the background and the, the Draenei Paladin kneeling. And here we are in Hellfire Peninsula. Look at this beautiful red barren wasteland with the the pit lord off in the background and there's these fell guards marching past. Oh, there are so many people. This is like the uh, the scarab lord event in AQ. This is how it went when when, when uh, folks were looking to to, to to ring the dong. I mean, ping the gong. You know what I mean? I'm excited. I'm flustered, and I'm uh, I'm I I can't wait to to get to Hellfire Ramparts and 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 kill some stuff because we're we're skipping over all the quests for now. But of course, we're jumping the gun a little bit here. There's uh, this huge train of people is stopping at this particular location because there is a quest to uh, to fly to Honor Hold. And uh, would you look at the lag going on right now? We've uh, we've picked up Arrival in Outland, and now now we can head over to this uh, this flight master here to take one of the seemingly infinite Griffins and fly off to Honor Hold which will be our staging ground for the next uh, next couple of episodes probably because we're uh, we're we're starting with our dungeon grinding in uh, Hellfire Ramparts and the Blood Furnace if we can get past all this lag that is and if we can pull away from from watching this this massive train of players uh, come down the steps and and over here to the flight path just this one little area provides a, a glimpse into the the scope of, of what's going on during this expansion launch. It's kind of fascinating, but let's not be, be mystified, be stupefied by the site for any longer. Let's, let's get flying to Honor Hold and have a little look around as we do. Like, uh, look on that, that gigantic pit commander over there. And, uh, oh, hello there, there's someone with me. I can barely talk to him because of all the lag going on, but it seems our messages get through eventually because he's talking to me too. Uh, we were chosen for this moment. Flying through the air to to honor hold at the same time. You know, it, it's fun seeing all these people around, and uh, we'd better enjoy it while it lasts because uh, after today, uh, the layers will go back to being uh, it will go back to being scattered across all the layers. The alliance have only organized for the launch, so uh, we'll, we'll be seeing horde everywhere soon after this. We're uh, we're conversing about our our dungeon farming yeams at the moment. And I'm sharing my favorite Yeem, of course, the Ravager, which uh, which we will see in action in the Ramparts, and we'll we'll analyze if it 
continues to serve any purpose here. Or at least as much of a purpose as it did in vanilla. And if you were paying attention there, I also mentioned that I leveled up a dragon hawk, which is far from the ideal pet, mind you, but I think they will be fun. And besides, I'm not a beast mastery hunter, I am my guild survival hunter for TBC, so I'm mostly utility for the moment. And as such, I'm quite alright using a suboptimal pet, like the fire-breathing cousin of the Flappy Zapper. Let's talk to this fellow first, and uh, actually, can I read this? I gotta check if I can read this this letter here. No, it's sealed. So uh, we'll, we'll just turn it in. It was worth a, worth a look, worth a try. Because you know there'd be some story time with Rizaya if there were anything... Oh my gosh, would you look at all these griffins? I'm sorry, I'm on a, a thousand tracks at once at the moment because there's there's such a rush to, to get to this dungeon. I was the first one to the summoning stone and uh, our the, the rest of our group is joining us shortly. We'll put a star on our tank and a, and a moon on our healer. C, like the frog in the Ravden. And what's with this earthbind? Ah, hey, it was probably this shaman. Let's kill him for... Uh, for being a mild inconvenience to us. And that priest is probably part of his group too, so let's kill her too. <laughs> I can't imagine why they thought that would be a good idea to to go ahead and, uh, and bother the Alliance at the, at the stone. We don't really care as long as they leave us alone. I mean, we're all going to the same place, right? We're, we're making our way past this beautiful new loading screen with the, the vicious red fell orc on the screen, and uh, Actually, I'm jumping the gun a bit here. I should head back outside to Honor Hold because uh, there is some other stuff that I forgot, like setting my hearth, and uh, there are also some mana potions in my mail. I, I already got a whole bunch of mana potions and such uh, in my bags to trade my groupmates when we started. Uh, my, my friend's trying to trade me there, but we'll trade at the instance. There's no no rush to trade right now. There are folks already out here questing and killing those fell orcs, and there's already a caravan. There are multiple caravans of people just moving back and forth between the ramparts and uh, and the blood furnace, and this is this is a lovely sight at the beginning of a new expansion. The the bustle, the hustle and bustle of uh, of everything going on. Of course, we won't need to walk back. We've gotten a summon, and we'll we'll take that as soon as we set our hearth here, because it would be kind of a pity if we if we somehow got hearthed all the way back to Stormwind, and uh, if the summoning stone were suddenly crawling and horde that uh, proved to be hostile. Okay, our business is attended, and now it is time at last to uh, to run on in and uh, and start trading out these potions that I've got on me. This is uh, th these are all leftovers from either raiding or uh, spamming DMT, and they are still valuable. I could sell all these, but I think I'll have enough for epic flying through my large brilliant shards and whatnot. No, oh, my group has started pulling things. I'll I'll try to finish trading this stuff quickly. I think I'll have enough for epic flying through uh, through other liquid assets I've saved up. So I feel comfortable trading some things out to my friends for some some hardcore leveling group leveling fun yeems. Right, so where exactly are we? Well, uh, we've got Ibarra, who, uh, who was a paladin in vanilla and is re-rolling hunter. I'll be tutoring him as best I can, uh, being an experienced hunter from vanilla. Uh, we've got Takanu, who is playing arms, and uh, he has tanked before, he's tanked plenty, he's a very experienced and very good warrior, uh, but nevertheless will still be pulling aggro like mad because uh, that's... because, well, I, I just can't help myself. Uh, we've got Ganir, another paladin main, swapping to Worth, the warlock, and uh, I'm here with my, uh, my, my dragonhawk, doing dragonhawk things. Uh, Ibarra will eventually get a Ravager, uh, the pet I mean, not necessarily the axe. Until then, he'll be rolling with a cat. And as for my spec, well, I said that I'm survival, I've got Wyvern Sting, obviously, which uh, can clearly be used to take uh, one important target out of a fight, like a ranger that won't come to us anyway unless we lose it. So that'll be pretty useful, but we do not have Scattershot as it stands. So right now we'll we'll be experimenting with what we can and can't do, and trying to uh, trying to figure out a good rotation. In terms of what might comprise that rotation, we've still got aim shot and multi shot, and arcane shot. And if you notice, uh, aim shot and arcane shot no longer share a cooldown. But there are some some caveats, some new behaviors that I'm still not aware of at this stage. Things that I uh, I have yet to pick up through observation and discussion with my fellow hunter colleagues. Certain things, fortunately, remain quite the same. 
For instance, uh, have a look at the multi-shot that we fire out on this next pack right here. I wyvern stung one target and check this out. Ibarra fires a multi-shot at the skull and it hits the cross because the cross is still close enough, but it does not change across to the triangle. Mine is fired just a moment later and it did in fact wake up the triangle from the sleep because it chained uh, to the triangle as the secondary target and again was too far away from the cross to, uh, to chain a third time. So the multi-shot behavior is exactly the same and we'll still need to use plenty of that if we want to avoid breaking CC or aim it at three specific targets otherwise. Just as well, multi-shot still cannot be fired behind us. So if we stand between a primary target and a secondary target that is too close, as long as the secondary is behind us, our multi-shot will not chain from the primary target to the secondary. But that also means we need to realign ourselves if there are targets that we want to hit that happen to be ever so slightly behind us. If something that has changed for the worse would be aim shot, which uh, actually causes a rather large delay after being fired, during which time auto shot cannot be fired. We can fire multi shot and arcane shot afterwards, but it's probably not even worth precasting unless you have misdirect up, and we do not get misdirect until 70. So its use uh, through these these dungeons that we'll be doing is quite mistaken. Oh, and we've got a nice little blade storm right here. We'll we'll be seeing more of the Ravager, and and we'll determine its its power, its use uh, through these these initial dungeons. But anyway, as I was saying, Arcane Shot has received a massive buff, and now even scales with our AP, making it extremely strong. And we'll be using it at least up until we get Steady Shot, at which point I'll be questioning its use once again. It also can dispel a magical effect, so we may want to save it for those sorts of circumstances when, uh, when there are magical effects on the enemies that we may wish to dispel like some kind of shield or, or buff of some sort. And finally, the biggest change that we've, we've got to deal with is the total lack of a dead zone. Uh, now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with Vanilla Hunter, uh, if you're checking in on this later, uh, in Vanilla, hunters had a, a dead zone, quote-unquote. And that refers to the area between ranged and melee attacks where neither could be performed. Which greatly slowed down weaving, because you only want to melee on a target after your auto-shot, multi-shot, and aim shot were put on cooldown. But that does not need to be the case in TBC. Because there is no dead zone, there's no need for so much movement. You see I'm jumping in and jumping out right there. This is entirely unnecessary. All you need to do is stand on the minimum range, twitch in ever so slightly, and twitch out. It's going to be a hard habit to break, but I have noticed this is the way that things are. I will be doing my best to, uh, to change my behavior, to adjust to this new way of doing things. And mostly, it means that we can weave a lot more often. We can fit both of our auto attacks into our rotation very, very often. So we'll speak more about the, the rotation after we get Steady Shot, most likely, because that is, that is the core of our rotation in TBC. And that will not be coming until level 62. For now, we'll be focused on whatever it is that we're doing in this particular dungeon run, what it is we're doing, and what it is that we're learning. So right there you can see I used multi-shot to finish off a target and damage an existing target before they got too far away. We've finished off that target with a melee strike after an arcane auto, and this target behind us that I slept, this, this caster, uh, is now dead. On this next pack, I've precasted aimed shot on one of the fragile non-elites, and it's nearly dead already. And there it goes, it, it died to the Shadow Fury that our, our Warlock is using. Hello there, Bladestorm, but the, the targets are too far away, so we break out of it and finish the the Wolf with an Arcane Shot. It's it's pretty powerful, isn't it, in TBC? I kind of like that, actually. It's it's some potent instant damage. We've stopped a moment to, to open this chest, but let's continue on. We're being somewhat cautious, trying to clear out as much of these... as much of this trash, as many of these enemies as we can before engaging the boss. We do not know what it is that pulls with the boss and what does not. We've, uh, we're only being so cautious, however, because we have uh, gone ahead and pulled another target. Ibarra has trapped one in a freezing trap, but we're gonna break that with our, our explosive trap accidentally. It's no problem though, because we have a blade storm proc, and then we're kidney shot. That's one of the reasons why the Ravager is not exactly the most useful thing in TBC, 
There might be some specific locations in dungeons where a Ravager might be useful. From what I can tell, TBC trash mobs are are pulled in in less in less numbers, and they also have uh, various abilities that would that would interfere with our ability to to blade storm things. So those opportunities are very few and far between. I'm sad to say, but the good news is that because of the changes to the dead zone and such, uh, we are open to a much more weavy style with a traditional weapon. And that can also be a tremendous amount of fun, which we'll see as I continue to gain experience and learn what it is that I'm doing wrong and what it is that I am doing right and should do more of. Right there, we've, uh, we're firing off another dead zone shot, a fantastic dead zone shot right there. We were able to also dish out a raptor and an arcane, and we're finishing off these targets just in time for the boss to come over here and then give us some loot. The boss, however, is also obligated to challenge us to see if we're deserving of the loot, which is entirely fair and we will tolerate this, uh, this challenge. I do not have anything to interrupt that, or so I think. Wyvern Sting can be used in combat in TBC, and in a circumstance like that, where a heal might go off, we can use it as an interrupt. My BM Hunter friends uh, are, are whining to me rather often that uh, they can't interrupt some things in dungeons. And sure, you've got intimidation, but it is tricky to use. I'm going to try to make my way into closer range with these fellows. I've gotten another Wind Fury proc, and isn't those isn't that just so beautiful? I love having a shaman in my groups. Wind Fury makes using a two-hander feel so, so much better. There's just so much more that you can get out of it. This pack of five again looks like some nice bladestorm fodder, but they do fear, so it's kind of inconvenient if they if they happen to fear us. Remember, tremor totems do not instantly do, do, do not prevent fear. They may instantly dispel a fear, but if a fear gets off at all, then that's that will stop your bladestorm right then and there, and that nulls the use of the ravager. We can still make use of dead zone shots and raptor strike to our heart's content, which we shall do because I'm I'm discovering just how powerful the lack of a dead zone is. If you if you recall during the Nax episode, I believe I mentioned that I wasn't able to. <laughs> there was a there was a poor multi shot timing right there. Um, I believe I mentioned that I was unable to really play during the pre patch due to trying to wrap up my affairs for TBC and also edit the Nax episode before TBC came out. And thank goodness I was able to get it done by. Uh, before the first. So I did develop a tiny bit of a habit using Arcane Shot on cooldown uh, during the pre-patch when I was leveling my Dragonhawk, and it's going to continue to be reinforced as we as we grind dungeons up to 62. It's going to confuse my first attempts at a rotation using Steady Shot. Right there was a mistake with Multi-Shot. I was not able to hit all three targets because I did not mouse over Multi the caster. Instead, I, I hit the central target which chained towards us and could not chain across all three. Our group is ready, so I'm going to get this next pack right here. It has a couple of rangers, so I'll do my best to either stay out of line of sight uh, to a point, or uh, be far enough away that they, they continue to run back towards me. Now that our tank has them, I can double back and get closer to melee range. There's our exposed weakness proc uh, on the these enemies, and, and that's the key to the survival tree. That's the reason that we bring a single survival hunter to a raid in, in the Burning Crusade. Beast Mastery seems to me to be the best uh, best damage overall, at least uh, in this early phase. I don't know about later. It could very well be the best then too. Uh, well, I guess we'll find out when we get there. But the one survival hunter can apply a debuff to these enemies on critical strikes, ranged critical strikes, that increases the attack power of all attackers against the target, which is really nice in a, in a physical heavy group like this. I've also got 5 of 5 improved hunter's mark, so uh, what that does is it, it makes all of my my base attack power from applying Hunter's Mark also apply the two to melee attack power. So so the melee and ranged get to benefit from Hunter's Mark, uh, at least to some extent, and that'll hopefully help our tank uh, keep aggro just a bit better. It's kind of difficult when I'm, I'm trying to practice this weave heavy rotation and drawing a lot of threat by doing so. Because the mobs look at me like, Oh look, this this guy has no idea what he's doing. I guess I better kill him first. You know, thinking I'll be I'll be easy prey. But uh, jokes on them, I've got Aspect of the Monkey and they can't hit me in the slightest. There was another nice uh, nice melee shot with our, our multi-shot right there. We've, we've swung out another melee swing 
And uh, I'm trying to find some, some place to range over here. Here we go, everything was stunned with a Shadow Fury so we can step away and finish stuff off with the ranged attacks. An Auto Arcane. My group continues down this way towards, uh, what, is, what is his name? Vazrudan the Herald? It Vaz something something or other. It's a, it's a weird uh, enunciation. A weird layout of the syllables in his name, so I, I don't quite recall exactly how to pronounce it. And there was a nice little uh, shot combo to finish that target off. But anyway, my group recalls that the, uh, the boss down this way is further away from the entrance. So we're going to go this way first. We're going to kill this, this big demon at the end of the path here. And after that, we'll head back to, to Vazruden the Herald, or, or whatever his name is. Because after he's dead, we can, we can simply hop down off the broken bridge, and we'll, we're right there at the instant's entrance. Which makes for a quick reset and continuation onto the next run. These both are casters, so I've, I've shot one and, and hidden in this little nook. That one is on a different target, but he is making good multi-shot fodder. I'm not sure that hit both targets there, I think that only hit the one. But all's well, I will simply move into position to melee him and shoot the other one, which is dead, never mind. Uh, I suppose I'll just step away from this one then and, and continue ranging until he's dead, and then we can move on to the boss. Except for that, that little raptor strike, that cheeky raptor strike at the end right there. I'm certain it's highly evident how the lack of a dead zone is naturally encouraging me to, to linger more around melee range, and also encouraging me to weave that much more. It's just that I, I haven't learned yet that such so much movement is not necessary. I haven't learned to stay put, I, I keep jumping out and j jumping in and jumping out. This boss appears to be mostly ranged, as you can see. I imagine this might be an issue on heroic, but here on normal and in full T3 it's it's not really a threat. His his Kind of impressive damage output, actually. I haven't done any weaving here because I haven't been moving in closer, as I should have been doing during my auto shot GCD. And but we'll see what we can do on on this this final boss of the Hellfire Ramparts. I've uh, I've separated these two so I can I can melee one and the other one's dead, so I can't range it. Um, I suppose I'll just step away from it and get a couple of shots off while it's stunned. Immediately after these two are dead, it turns out that the boss uh, comes down and uh, hops off his mount, and then the dragon pops out. I've popped a major mana here because I've got a billion of them and there's no point in holding back while we're here. We're, we're here to have fun, we're here to chug along in every respect, in, a, in every sense of the word. That means no shenanigans today, I'm not going to stand in the fire as much as I, I want to be nice and warm and cozy uh, here, in, here in Hellfire Ramparts, get nice and situated on our, on our dungeon spam. It is important for our healer's comfort that we do not stand in the fire and I will confer to his judgment. Here I'm, I'm strafing around the boss rather than, than moving in closer to it, and realizing that I decide to put multi-shot and arcane shot on cooldown and try to get a little bit closer. I've pulled aggro and I'm taking a lot of damage all at once, so I'm a little bit scared to stay in melee, I'm just going to stay at range and uh, not get myself killed. No weaving today, but we'll see if we can fix that for future runs. And we are going to see a bit of some other runs, because I kind of like how the Nax episode was formatted, you know, we saw one main run. This run being the very first TBC dungeon run that I did, that I partook in. And we're going to cut to some other runs as we see fit. So what is it that we're doing over here? Well, we've just burst down that elite very, very quickly. We've gotten a Bladestorm proc. I'm going to pop my Jam Kabar. Uh, there is a patrol incoming right now. My hunter friend has shot it, so I'm going to follow up with a multi-shot, which hits all three targets in the patrol. Again, we've gotten kidney shot, but it's not during the Bladestorm, so all is well there. There are fewer than three targets, so I'm stepping away and I'm going to finish these targets off with range and then move on. Here I get the idea to attempt to pull that patrol at the end of its path, but as it turns out, it was close enough to the other pack to, to pull that too. So we get three packs here. My friends start running out. I am not in a safe place to be feigned, so I, I'm just going to get up and... Oh, I'm feared. Well, I'm, I'm probably about dead right here, but it seems my friends are, are making it out alive. And that's all I can really ask for after having done that. You know, it wouldn't be one of my runs if I didn't try to wipe my group once in a while. I mean, I didn't try to wipe my group there, but uh, it, it, it almost turned out that way. Here we've got a patrol by itself, but for some reason it pulls all the way over to the boss, so I feign that off right away. That could have been nasty, but it wasn't. We moved on normally, and I'm going to use my Hunter Burst to attempt to take out these non-elites as best I can. One of them is already down, the other one has been hit with a concussive shot, I'm going to aim shot on it because I don't know any better, and hey, it, it still worked out. 
We're only left with these three elites, and because there are three targets, I'm going to try to blade storm, and we got one. I've popped my Jamgabar during the blade storm because I can do that. I am not being CC'd, so it is it is going well. I am spinning to winning. But as you can see, while spinning, I'm not winning. Worth takes out the edge on the details meter, which might be the case because there were only two targets at the time. But it also suggests that Blade Storm is uh, not quite as effective with my ability to melee and range at the same time so easily in TBC. So there's less gimmicky stuff to take advantage of, but more weaving to learn about, to, to, to lean on. I've hit that one with a Wind Fury Strike, which was pretty fun, but it would have been a lot more powerful if I had my, uh, my Eye of Nerub equipped. I've still got my Ravager on at the moment. And the difference is very noticeable with Wind Fury in my group. And Wind Fury might increase the proc chance of the Ravager, but Wind Fury would also benefit a traditional weapon a lot more. Like the Eye of Marub would hit so much harder. And you can see for yourself, at the beginning of this run, I've uh, still got my Eye of Nerub equipped. I've trapped one of the targets because Worth is AFK and we don't really want to to go to him without our Warlock friend. And here I'm a lot more attentive to the melee that I should be doing. I fired off an aim shot once again, not realizing that there's such a long delay, and I'm, I'm trying to keep close enough to these targets to melee them, and I am getting a few swings off. That Raptor Strike hit pretty hard. Uh, there's, there's the target from the trap, which is now free and I've, I've feigned it off. So I can step back to a comfortable range and continue keeping my auto shot and auto attack on cooldown. And this is sort of a moment for, of clarity for me. The, the fact that I, I can keep both my auto shot and auto attack on cooldown so easily. Here we're continuing on. Uh, my Wyvern Sting is on cooldown, so I can't use it to, to pop anything in this pack, but our tank's gonna bring it back to us mostly to catch the target that got loose and came onto me. We've got a target in our melee and a target at range, but you can see that auto targeting is just a bit touchy. It's a bit different in TBC than it was in vanilla. So swapping between targets is a little finicky, but did you see the flurry of attacks that were loosed on the enemy? That is what we can do in TBC, and that is what I need to learn to do more of, and that, that is what I'm, I'm observing at this time. And slowly but surely, I will learn. Here we are on yet another boss kill, first boss in, uh, in the Hellfire Ramparts, and I actually got a Bladestorm proc right here on this boss fight. Kind of funny, but I, I do want to point something out here. Look at this, I can hit these targets with Bladestorm at the same range that I can use my ranged shots from. I can I can arcane shot, I can multi-shot. So coming out of Bladestorm is, uh, is made easier by things being at an appropriate range already to lose some more shots more often. But that doesn't make Bladestorm very useful in TBC, especially when we get such huge hits with Raptor Strike and Wind Fury like that. With, uh, with, a, with a stronger melee weapon. Here we've pulled the patrol and also gotten the pack on the right. So this seems ripe for blade storms, and we'll, we'll try to get one. It might offer us some more insight into how it performs with a larger number of targets. That was a multi-shot that was unfortunately scuffed. It did not hit as many targets as it could have. We did get a blade storm proc, but these mobs hit really hard, even though they're not CCing me. Uh, I did have some cover there thanks to Shadow Fury. But I can't keep tanking them, because uh, they, they are chunking me, and also seize mana. So so I've got deterrence up at the moment, it's about to wear off, and when it does, I can feign these guys off. That should help the tank a little bit, some avoidance over absorption, and we'll finish this back. Later on What's-His-Face, we, uh, we start with the sentries, and I'm going to move my way down the ramp. I'm going to make my way down this ramp. Uh, through melee and through some more range. I'm gonna stop to shoot back at these fellows when I when I get the chance. We put aim shot on cooldown. Uh, I'm gonna fire off the multi shot, the auto shot, and the raptor to finish that guy off. Something I used to do back in in looking for group, you know, when uh, when looking for group was a thing, and 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 you spam dungeons on retail WoW to to level up. Uh, I like to to hit the the dragon in the sky if I'm playing a ranged class. Uh, before uh, before he comes down, because it's a bit of damage, it's it's a bit of uh, chunking him before he becomes a serious threat. And the lower that he is when he lands, the easier he is to deal with after he starts being a real problem. And now I'm going to start weaving some, or at least I, I try to until Takanu falls falls down right there and and can't seem to get back up again. My deterrence is up and I have mail armor, so I hold on to the boss until he dies to protect my squishier groupmates. And we make it onto that one just fine. 
And by the way, did you notice that I was hanging around melee a bit too often there, or a bit too long? In vanilla, there was always enough time for cooldowns to reset running in or out. Uh, but TBC, in TBC, that isn't the case. For the first time, I actually need to pay attention to my auto attack timer, that blue bar going uh, to the left while my auto shot timer goes to the right. We've got a lot of edges to smooth out, but that'll have to come later since I'm out of time for this episode. What, already? Yeah, I know, the next episode was long, but it was a long raid. I do want to do shorter episodes, I think it's easier to pack more content into a smaller place, it's easier to digest things that way. At the same time, I am a bit of a completionist, so if we wind up needing to spend more time somewhere, I may do something longer, but I'll try to cut down on things. I'll try to cut things down to the essentials, like I did here. After all, this is the reason I don't like streaming. It has its moments that are juicy when you witness something happening live, but there's a lot of fluff in between, and I like to, I like to present, you know? I like to deliver. Anyway, that's all for now. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.